Give me some, oh, yeah, I already ruined it. Give me some numbers uh, to the right of two. Some numbers to the right. Three. three. Give me something smaller than three. Like 2.5. Two point five is good. I like that. That's what I was about to write. That's why I almost ruined it. Give me something a little bit closer to two. Closer than that, maybe. 2.1. Yeah, or 2.01. We want really close, right? So 2.1 and maybe 2.001. That's pretty close. Take your calculators out, by the way. Now, let's go the other way. Give me a number that's smaller than 2 that we want to work our way up from this way. Okay. Sure. Uh, how about we, we keep it kind of symmetrical? 1.5. I like that one. We'll do... Uh, 1.9, all right, and 1.999. How about that? Does that work for you? Take those numbers, our function's x squared. Let's look what happens to the function as we plug those things in. If you plug in 2.5, what do you get when you plug in 6.25 or something like that? Plug in 2.5. Do you get 6.25? Yeah. Okay. So we'd start with 6.25. What we care about is, does this side, look at the, look at the board, if we go this way and we go this way, do they meet up at the same point? That's what we're talking about for limits. Now, this is a very easy example. We just were working with x squared. We know the answer is going to be 4, right? Or at least it should be 4. We're going to see if that actually happens when we, when we evaluate our limits. Plug in 2.1, someone out there. Tell me what you get when you plug in 2.1, would you? 4.41. Okay, that's close to 4. Tell me what you get when you plug in 2.001. 2.0004. Wait, was it? 4.004001. How about that? Like that? How about 1.5? Oh, that's, that's uh, 225, isn't it? How about 1.9? Plug in 1.9. What do you get when you do that? X squared. 3.6. And now do 1.999. 1.999. What do you get? How much? 3.960. Emma. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. What's going on here? Let's see. With a limit, we really don't care about what happens at two. Because a lot of times what you're going to find out is that we deal with limits where you can't get to that number because it for some reason it's undefined, like our slope problem we just had, okay? So we're trying to figure out what's happening from the right and from the left and see if those are going heading towards the same exact value. Are they? We're going from 6 down to 4, down to 4.04. .04. Where's this heading? Towards 4. Where's this heading? It's heading towards 4. What we would say right now, this is how you write it. A couple notes about this. Uh, the function must pro approach the same value from both the left and the right. So this is from the right. This is from the left. The function must approach the same value from the left and the right for the limit to exist. If it does, here's how you write the limit. What you do is you put a little lim under case, which kills me because I can only write in capitals. So you put the limit. You put the variable you're working with. You put that little arrow, which I already told you is approaching. And you put the value to which x is approaching. x is this one. Where are we, where are we trying to get to on our x? We're trying to find out what happens around the point x equals 2. Does that make sense to you? So you'd say the limit as x approaches 2 of your function. What was our function? Say it again. X squared. x squared. The limit as x approaches 2 of our function is equal to. What did, it, what did the function approach? Here's what this says in English, okay? Look at the board. What does the function approach 
as the value x approaches 2. What's the function approach as x approaches 2? What's it going to do? That's the limit. In general, we have, uh, we have this. This will be the last bit. We have a limit of a function is equal to some number. That's what capital L is. That would stand for the limit of this function as x approaches a. It's what the function is tending to do from both sides as x approaches one single value. Um, the only thing that we, we, uh, we need to know is the limit really doesn't depend on getting to a. Right? x is never going to equal a. X never gets A. We just care about what's happening to the value of the function as X is getting really close to A from both sides. Up here on the board, what's happening to the function as X is getting really, really close to A from both sides? It's getting really, really close to 4. That's the idea of a limit. How many people understand the idea of a limit? Cool. Next time we'll work on how to find some limits. All right. So if you remember from last time, we're talking about limits. And what we're realizing is that a, a limit basically says or asks the question, what is the function doing, what's the value of the function doing as x approaches a certain number? Now, do we ever care what happens when x gets to that number as far as a limit is concerned? No, no. no, not really. Just what's the function doing? Where's it getting close to as we're getting close to that x value? And that's, that's the idea here. So when we're talking about the limit of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, that's our function, we want to find out what happens as x approaches 1. Now, why can't I figure out what happens when x equals 1? Tell me that. That would be undefined, right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it makes both a numerator and denominator 0. And that would still be undefined. Uh, we found out that that's, is that a hole or an asymptote, do you remember? That's a hole. That's going to be a hole. That ultimately, this function has a hole. So what we want to find out, though, is what's the function doing? as we approach that certain value. Now one way we've we figured out, the only way we figured out these limits is to make up a table. And this is kind of the elementary way that you discover limits right when you first learn. Now towards the end of the day, I'll teach you some better ways on how to do this. For right now though, I want you to see what happens with the function with the limit. So when you are finding these, and your homework's going to ask you for that, find the, the limit of this function by making a table of. When you do that, you have your x values on the, the top, you have your f of x values on the bottom, in this case, x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, and you start with the number you want to find the, the limit of, the, the number where, that you want to find the limit of the function where, where x is approaching that certain value, put that in the middle. So for instance, you're going to put 1 right there. And really, I don't want to know what that is, because you can't plug it in anyway. What we want to find out is what's happening from both sides. Is it going to the same value? You follow me on this? So, what you need to do now, put these numbers in order because it is a number line. You don't want to have like, I see a lot of mistakes on this. I see a lot of people do this. Okay, well, I'm going to start at 2, and then I'm going to go to 1.5, and then I'm going to go to 1.1, and then I'm going to go to 1.0001. Right. Do you see how that's the wrong way to do it? That, that's going to show you one direction, but it's the wrong direction. You need to have these numbers reversed so that this is just a little bit past one. We're coming from the right-hand side. So if you want to find out where it's coming from, don't, don't have two right here. Have two over there somewhere if you're going to do that. All right, so these numbers that we have next to one, they should actually be the numbers that are close to one, all right, not the other way around. That, are you following that? Not sure if you're okay with that. So we don't want to have the, the smallest numbers over here, that are the ones that are closest to 1 over there. We want this just like a number line would look. So here, maybe we do start with 1.5, 1.01, 1.001. Make it really close to 1. Now the other way, I'll probably want to start with 0.5, right? I want to make it symmetrical at least a little bit. So where's 0.5 going to go? Is it going to go by the 1 or over here on the left-hand side? Okay. Left-hand side. I want the numbers that are really closest to 1, well, the closest to 1. That's going to show me the trend. 
So 0.5 may be 0.99 and 0.999. What I'd like you to do right now on your own, take out your calculator, find those numbers. Uh, how about this? The people to the let's see, this is your left. The people to the left side of the camera, do these ones, okay? People to the right side of the camera, do those ones. Can you do that for me? So plug into the function, tell me what you're getting out. Have you started to find those numbers? Does anybody have uh, this one yet? 6.6. Six six does everybody got that one the same one? 6.6666 six, 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 forever? Okay. So 6.67. How about the point nine nine? Did anyone find that one? Point nine nine. Can I get a double check on that? Five point. How much? Point five zero three. Point five zero. How about for this one? That's the that one, right one. Let's double check that one. Point nine nine minus one. That should be pretty small. You know, negative something. Uh, one more double check. What'd you say it was? Point five and then for that first one, point six. Yeah, point six. Point six six. Is your calculator in scientific notation by chance? No. Why don't you guys figure out your stuff, all right? I'll come back to you all. <laughs> this side. Try this side. Can you give me 1.5? 1.4. Uh, How much? 0.4. 0.4? Can you give me 1.01? 0.497. <coughs> How much? 0 0.497. 0 0.497? 0 0.497? I'll take it. Okay, can you give me 1.001, uh, 1 .001, please? 1.001. 0.499. 0 0.499? 0 .499. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I'm guessing the 6 was probably not, not all that accurate. Let's try that again. Ah, so 0.6. Okay, give me 0.99. Point what? 